So stay with us for that. And last week we started. We did. We started. We started our Sewing a Proper Fit series. So we're going all the way through um, all the best ways to get a proper fit out of your uh, project, whatever it may be. It may not be all the best ways, but... A some. lot of the best ways. Yes. And, you know, it's so important. And so many people, sewing education, home sewers, sewing education, did not include fitting. And certainly not before. Most of us, we walked into a home ec class or your grandmother's sewing room or whatever, and they said, okay, make an A-line skirt. Here's your pattern. Cut it out. Sew it up. And... When you're 12 to 16 years old, that's probably pretty possible for most people. But you didn't get any of the basics that time to understand that when you're not a stick figure or don't have a really uh, average figure type, what do you do to get it to fit? And why should you make a muslin? And all of those details. And so what we're going to do with this series is set you up for success give you some tips on uh, today on choosing the proper fabric and the proper interfacing but we're going to continue through that process so you understand about dress forms and we're going to make a muslin and we're going to move on to some alterations um, we won't cover all alterations but we'll cover some of the basic ones and just to help you understand the overall process before you cut into your fashion fabric, what should you do? And last week we covered ease and how to find the ease in a pattern. And most sewers know there's ease, but they don't maybe necessarily know how much ease is in this pattern versus another pattern. And does McCall's always put the same ease in every pattern? No. And neither does Simplicity or anybody else. It's, it varies by the style of the garment. But hopefully, if you didn't see that series, that part of the series, go back and watch the one from last week to understand how to get uh, discover the ease and know what size in each pattern to cut. Because you may cut an 8 in one pattern and a 14 in another and a 16 in another. So forget the number. And we covered all that last week. Yeah, so all of our videos, um, I know we talk, I mentioned this a lot, but it gets asked a lot um, all of our videos stay right here on Facebook under videos they are in uh, chronological order the earliest being first when you pull it up that way so you could go through and see them all if you need to go back and look at last week's and um, figure out what the best uh, pattern fit is for you and the ease and all that stuff we covered a lot of stuff it was very informative, very helpful. Some stuff you may have already known, some stuff you never even thought of. Right, I, I get that a lot. People say, oh, I, I'm so glad you showed me that. I didn't know that. Um, and another thing that a lot of us who haven't gone to look at videos on Facebook, what I would have normally done before we did this is just keep scrolling through the feed to try and find all the Facebook, all the videos. And you could do that, but it's time consuming. There's actually a page on the Facebook, uh, on our Facebook page, there's a little link called videos, and that's where all the videos are. So just find that link, and then you'll have them all uh, available to you. Okay. And, um, okay, so last week we were talking about how to find what size in a any pattern and today we're gonna move on to where you'd go next and that is your fabric your interfacing choosing what is best for you and the, pa the pattern that you are making okay so everyone should be aware that's used any kind of pattern that somewhere on the pattern envelope uh, on the back of the guide somewhere you're going to find the measurements of uh, the sizes and then they're going to find suggested fabrics. So um, particularly if you are not really attuned to all the different types of fabrics, the hand of different fabrics and things, 
you should stick to the suggestion as closely as possible. And people get tripped up with this because they go in the fabric store and they get seduced by this gorgeous cherry blossom print. And they just know that they are going to love this garment in that cherry blossom print. But what they may not know is it's not going to drape and it's not going to hang right in that garment. It's a beautiful print and it'd be perfect for that garment if it was in a different fabrication. So I want to talk just briefly about uh, fiber content and then we're going to get into the hand and the drape. But fiber content is so important and so few people, particularly those who don't sew, don't know anything about fiber content. And you know if you've been watching Tuesdays at 2 that I prefer in 80% of the cases to use natural fibers. Natural fibers the newer generation calls them sustainable, which means they can be reproduced over and over again because they come from a natural source, like a plant or an animal. So we all know wool comes from sheep. Sheep are sheared every spring and that wool is processed into fiber for yarns or for uh, weaving cloth. And cotton is grown in the field. Well, anything that resembles the word rayon. There's bamboo rayon, there's modal, there uh, sometimes they call it cellulose. So what it is is anything that's rayon is plant-based. So it's not like cotton comes from the blossom, the cellulose is the fiber within. So like trees are uh, often used, some type of the cellulose from a tree would be used to make rayon. And the cellulose from bamboo is used to make bamboo rayon. So anyways, those natural fibers are all wonderful and they all breathe uh, beautifully so they don't overheat your body. They're more comfortable to wear all year round. But you won't see on your pattern directions on the best fabric to get would be cotton. Because there are 57, 11,000 different types of cotton. There are so many different types of cotton when people say, oh, I can make that out of cotton. No, you need to know what type of cotton. And that goes the gambit with most fabrics. I mean, silk, most people will, that are, especially non-sewers, will identify silk as a slippery, shiny fabric. Well, not all slippery, shiny fabrics are silk. And not all silk, by any means, is a slippery, shiny fabric. So it's important to know that these fabrics can be woven into different uh, textures and different weights. And the weight really plays in on a lot of fabrics, particularly knits. So in a knit, it's important to know the weight because what do we have here? We've got a 4.2 ounce weight right here. And this is a rayon knit. And it's perfect uh, for a nice little uh, lightweight t-shirt. Great for that. But that's as far as pretty much this goes other than maybe baby or infant or children's uh, wear. But it's a very lightweight knit. So we wouldn't just say use rayon knit because a rayon knit at 4.2 ounces is nowhere near the same as a rayon knit that is 8.2 ounces. So this is much heavier and it will drape beautifully and you could do a full length garment out of this. So you could do a tunic out of this because it's heavy, it's weighty and so it's going to hang nice on the body. But if you took the four ounce uh, knit and tried to make a tunic out of it, what's going to happen? What do you think? It's going to be not fit right. It's going to be too clingy to your body. It's not going to drape and really just brush it's gonna the cling body. to your butt it's gonna go in between your legs when you walk it's not going to be a pretty thing so it's important to to identify that when they say use rayon knit they aren't saying as long as it says rayon just use it understand the different uh, weights and the best way to understand fabrics is memory feel Let's really show them this because you held it up, but yeah, basically if you can see, if you have one layer, 
you know, and you drape it over your hand. You can see this one is stiffer. Yeah, I'll just let that go. You see how she gets the more of the drape, of the pleating, where this one is a little bit stiffer, heavier. And it, yeah, and if you were here in person, you'd feel the weight. And stiff dip. is not at all a correct word, but stiffer. Yeah, firmer. You know, firmer. Mm-hmm. Holds its shape a little bit more. Right. And that's what you'd want if you were doing a full length right. garment. Sherry says, I always thought Rayanne was synthetic, like polyester. A lot of people think I that. I did for a long time, yep. Yep, nope, not a synthetic. And I think when, and this is was an issue back in the 50s and 60s. So if anyone who was sewing back then, I didn't sew in the 50s, but uh, there was, Rayon got a really bad reputation because that was early on for Rayon and it wasn't uh, as nice a quality as it is today. So sometimes when I'm working with an older student and they go, oh no, I'm not getting Rayon. I remember that stuff stretches out of shape. It doesn't hold... Uh, a good look for any length of time and I have to kind of <laughs> conjole them into understanding that Rayan's not what it used to be. It's, and those of you who bought the bamboo Rayan that we uh, were selling for the last two years for our, all the t-shirts, you know how wonderful that stuff is. So that's not the case with Rayan anymore. Uh, but so pay close attention and the other put with the back of the uh, envelope. So let's say that the back of the envelope says use linen and you walk into your local XYZ fabric store and you see a header on a fabric section that says linen look. Is that going to be acceptable? Well, I can tell you right now it's not. And here's, I was judging a contest and a young man came in, he was in 4-H and he'd made a shirt. And he'd done a really nice job, especially considering it was some of the crappiest polyester I had ever seen, which doesn't take the needle well. I don't know how this kid was able to do a halfway decent job on this, but we had to mark him down when he said that he had made a linen shirt. And when we went to him and his mother, and we said, you know, it's not linen. Well, it said linen look, so we thought it would be okay. All right, if you stood 20 feet away from this shirt, you might think it looked like linen. But anybody with a fa fabric understanding of any kind would have known because it was spongy like polyester and linen is very crisp and smooth and this had a loft to it. It did not look like linen even up close. So be careful. You'll also see silk-like, which means it's polyester, but it might be that slippery, shiny fabric and it may look like silk. And if you can compare it either in your memory or with another piece of fabric that's nearby and you can feel the weight and the drape is the same as the silk or so darn close no one's going to notice, then you might be able to substitute that fabric. But know that the weight, the hand, and the drape all play into why that designer said use these types of fabrics. So, um, so yeah, Marlene says... Linen look equals polyester. Yeah. And Cassie says, why do they call it linen look? Now, to fool you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to be like crude, but for the most part, it's to fool you. You're not going to likely find a linen look in a nice fabric store. No. You're going to find that in the fabric store um, with the bargain prices, the 40% off coupons and stuff like that. Is it good for something? Yes. Yeah. Is it good for making your garment? No. Is it linen? No. So they say linen look because they probably don't have a large selection of actual linen. Well, <laughs> and they also are playing to their customer base. Yes. And when your customer base is working with 50% off coupons and is a bargain shopper, not likely to come in there and, and plunk down 20 or $30 a yard for a piece of linen. And so that's also yes. the reason. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, because linen isn't cheap. A quality linen's not cheap, but oh, it is such a marvelous fabric if you like linen. It's worth the price, particularly if you... 
construct it properly. So it's very important to be educated on the types of fabric, like you're talking about the linen look, the silk like, and then the other thing that you know you talk about that people don't know exactly what linen is or how you know Sherry and I for a long time thought rayon was polyester, you know. So sometimes people find silk and don't think it's silk. Yeah. Because it's not the shiny, slippery stuff. So yeah. this is all um, stuff to educate yourself on so you know that you're purchasing the right fabric for the garment that you're making. And the best way to do that, and I know I was fortunate because there were a lot of sewers in my family, so from the time I was young, I walked through fabric stores. And right behind my mother, my aunt, my grandmother, and if they saw a fabric that looked good to them, they would walk up and they would touch it and they would Make rub their hand. fingers and thumb back and forth across the fiber to feel it. You do that enough times, you can tell if it's a natural fiber. You wouldn't have, I could have my eyes closed and if I touched that linen look and linen, there'd be no contest whatsoever. I'd know exactly. So if you want to really understand fabric, start feeling it. Start holding it in your hand and uh, rubbing your fingers across it. There's a memory that takes yeah, place look after at that, a while. Look at the fiber content. Look what it's made out of. Read really, the end of that bowl. It bolt. makes a big difference. It really, really does. Now, um, Linda wants to know, does all linen grow? No. It shouldn't. Um, there are fabrics that grow, but I've not had linen stretched out of shape at all. Um, yeah, no. Uh, the thing is, is if it's a very loosely woven linen, maybe that could kind of begin to move around. And that's another good thing to pay attention to is how firmly woven something is. Because sometimes it's lightweight like well, we just finished using uh, last fall lawn and we're carrying a lot of lawn and it is lightweight and soft and flowy, but it's not loosely woven. You could get that same sort of look out of a real loosely woven inexpensive fabric, but it won't hold up. It probably looked that good the first time you wear it. And then after that, it's going to start to lose its shape because it's not uh, woven uh, firmly. So anyway, I can't give you all the education there is to be had, but I can answer your questions on top of what we're giving you today. But I think the next thing we wanted to talk about was the drape. So we, we've talked yes, about we the talked hand. Yes, we talked a little bit of it. But so yes. when somebody says the hand of the fabric, it's just exactly this. How does it feel in your hand? You know, is it soft? Is it stiff? Do you want it touching your body? Yeah, that's a good one too. <laughs> but sometimes it's never going to touch your body. It's going to be like a wool coating, okay? Um, so it's all about understanding and feeling those different weights and drapeability of the fabric. So I don't know if you want to touch on this, but before we go further, we have a couple questions about sure. linen. Okay. And wrinkles. Okay, linen wrinkles. Can you speak to linen and wrinkling? Okay, so um, the jacket I have on has linen in it. And many of you have heard me talk about these cocas, the fabrics. And every time I wear a coca, everyone's like, where did you get the fabric? Where did you get the pattern? Okay, so I have a coca on today. And it has about 20% linen. And um, I underline the jacket in silk organza. So underlining simply means that you cut all the same pieces in silk organza that you do in the jacket. The old school way would be to base them all the right way around each piece, wrong side of the fabric to the silk organza, and then treat them as one piece of fabric and sew them together. What that does is, is silk organza does not wrinkle easily and it's got a lot of body to it, it's kind of springy. And, but it's very sheer and lightweight and it breathes. So you put it behind that and it keeps that linen from being able to get crunched like it does and all those knife pleats in it and stuff. So 
I have probably five or six of these jackets. I take them to shows. I wear them all the time. And the reason I love taking them to the shows is because I don't have to press them when I get there. And they are 80 to 20% uh, linen in them. But I've used that silk organza technique. Did we not cover that in one of our videos one time? I believe we did. Yeah, the spray. Because I spray yes. temporary spray glue the fab the silk organza to the fabric, and yeah, you can see in this one. Let me take this off. Funny you should mention. <laughs> so this has the silk organza uh, underlining. So when I'm working on it, it's glued together temporarily. So it's just like one piece of fabric. But once it's washed, it separates. So here's the organza, see? But it's just sitting in there, keeping the jacket from being a wrinkled mess. Does it eliminate all wrinkles? No, but it, it eliminates those terribly unsightly ones when you see somebody get up out of their seat in an airplane or something and the whole back of their jacket's like three inches shorter than it was when they sat down and there's those really sharp, sharp creases all the way across. Yeah, that won't happen. So that's my tip about uh, using silk organza to keep linen from being too wrinkly. Did you have another one, Jess? Um, no, I was just gonna say, I believe that that demo is on May 14th of 2019 okay um and somebody asked a little bit earlier and i answered them if you are looking for a specific topic our wonderful wonderful customer and friend mary jackson has made us um an index it's on the video page of our website islandersewing.com and you can go and just uh control f which will do a search for you of whatever topic you're looking for. So that was easy for me to find May 14th, I believe is that demo. Excellent, excellent. Um, okay, so, all right, we, you might be getting into this in a little while later. Marlene said she's seen hints about fully interfacing with fusibles and what type of interfacing would you use and wouldn't that defeat the purpose of using linen? Yes. Oh, so there you go. So don't, I just do don't that. do that. The only way I would fully interface something is if I was making a very structured jacket, like like a blazer or a man suit. They always fully uh, interline or un, uh, interline or interface. <laughs> Those are two of the same words. But anyways, they fully do that, and it causes uh, the garment to last a whole lot longer. And keep its shape however it does make it a lot firmer so that's usually done in um, wools or suiting that's you know expecting to be treated that way but if I was making a linen jacket or a linen pair of pants and then you fuse the uh, interfacing on it you've made them stiff now stiffer than linen is supposed to be because linen is supposed to be kind of yeah, it's firm, but it's also wobbly. <laughs> and you'll take the wobbly out of it, and it just won't be uh, as breathable either. So, yeah, no, I wouldn't do that in any other case than a blazer. Um, are there different types of silk organza? There are different grades of silk organza. And if you're going to underline, we carry a lower grade that you wouldn't make a dress, you wouldn't make a bridal gown out of this silk organza. Um, but yeah, it comes in different widths and different lengths and different colors. We carry for the specific purpose of either using it as a pressing cloth or an underlining. We carry the white and the black uh, silk organza, 45 white. Uh, Jean says, when I travel, I steam my clothes out of the suitcase in the shower to eliminate any small wrinkles. Can you do that with linen, yeah. with underlining, with the silk or yeah. yeah. I have found that I don't even need to steam, but it depends on how picky you are. Michelle um, says, embrace the wrinkles. Yes, and embrace, embrace the, the wrinkles. wrinkles. Um, if you like linen 
And there's some properties that linen has that no other fiber has. And particularly if you go to the tropics, you will notice that that's what people wear in the tropics. They wear linen all the time because it is so breathable and it doesn't cling to your body. So it's away from your body, it allows lots of air and breathability and it's just far more comfortable to wear than almost any other fiber when you're in a very warm uh, tropical If it's climate. humid enough, it steams itself for you. Yeah, there you go. And you know what? If you're comfortable, you can give. You can just say, I don't care for wrinkles, yeah. I'm comfortable. Now, Marianne wants to know, how do you determine the grade of organza? By the price. <laughs> But if you go to a good bridal shop, you're going to find the organza is going to be two or three times the price of what you might be able to find uh, through someplace else, like myself. Now, there is also polyester organza, but don't use polyester organza. That's your question, Amy. No, because it doesn't breathe. And if you're using linen, in a lot of cases you're using it for a warmer climate and you want to be comfortable. And if you're using a natural fiber and you're paying that kind of money for it, then get the most out of it. Don't take away from Don't it. Don't negate what yeah. you just purchased. It's kind of like putting ketchup yeah. on a steak. You know, I can't do it. I'm not gonna spend 30 bucks for a steak and put 10 cents worth of ketchup on it. It's gonna ruin it. <laughs> so it's kind of like that, um, at least in my imagination. <laughs> Okay, so I, this is a good question. Going back to, we talked about the weight. Mm -hmm. The weight. How do you weigh fabric? Or how to oh. differentiate two ounces versus four ounces, etc. Okay. That's a very good question, Linda. Fabrics, particularly knits, should come with the weight on them. And when you buy online, most good websites are going to tell you the weight of your knits. So we have the weight of our knits. We have the weight of um, a lot of our fabrics. Our The lawn, we've got the weight down. We're getting to the point where we want that on everything because we want to help you understand that. But there's going to be places that, um, that don't. And I'd be either moving on or asking for a swatch. Now I'm going to tell you how they determine the weight so the weight of fabric is determined either by uh, ounces per square yard or grams per square meter. So you'll see this term, and you may even have seen it and didn't know what it was, so you ignored it. So the term would be like 2.6, and then it would be O uh, S Y. That's 2.6 ounces per square yard, O-S-Y. Now, if you see it in grams, it's grams per square meter, which the, you can't equate the two, so you can go on to Google and do a conversion. So you just go convert grams to ounces, and a little chart will come up, and you just punch in your number, and it'll tell you. So you can get it straight. Because I buy from European sources, and a lot of times they're uh, measured in grams. But it is one square yard or one square meter. So in order to determine this particular, um, and we're going to talk about this fabric later because we just got this in. If you got the newsletter, you saw that. Um, I bought it in a really uh, special situation and I didn't have the ounces. So what I did was is I cut a square yard. It's 60 inches wide, so I cut a 36 inch one way, and then I cut some of the width off to get 36 inches, and you measure it, and that's exactly how it's measured. But you weigh it. Weigh it. But what, you know, back in the day, and this is probably mostly before I started sewing, a lot of fabrics were 36 inches wide. So it was real easy. One yard weighs this. But we haven't had, you find very little fabric 36 inch wide and it's usually a uh, Japanese fabric uh, made on special looms or something and frustrating well yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah how do I lay this up so it's hard to tell but denim is another one you want to know the weight because there's so many different weights of denim okay I think okay. now we can go into draping. Draping. Dra draping the drape the drape of the fabric so the drape of the fabric is really, really key to the success of a garment. 
and um, you've heard me harp on it and I've even written one of my myth busters about do not use quilters cotton for garments and people say well why is that well first of all it's just too coarse and too stiff secondly if you make it into a garment you'll be spending an awful lot of time either wearing a very wrinkly garment very wrinkly or pressing constantly pressing so let me just show you I've got two cottons here and one is a quilters cotton and one is lawn so we just kind of threw them up over the top of these little stands on the dress form to kind of show you so this is the lawn this is actually a piece of the fabric of the shirt I made for the sew along and when I throw this up here you can see that it automatically drapes very soft drapes very soft fold and this is going to lay nicely across the body without clinging to the body but it's going to drape around the body very nicely this is a quilter's cotton and you can see there's very little drape to this fabric and look what it does all by itself it sticks straight up from the body so when i see these cute little patterns that some of these new pattern designers make for children's clothes and they've got six ruffles around the ankles and they got ruffles here and a big full skirt and they make it out of the quilter's cotton I can't help but laugh because number one that's always going to be sticking straight out the kids gonna have to walk with their legs apart or the fabrics gonna be pushing and the first time they take that out of the dryer mom's gonna be an hour and a half at the pressing station trying to get all the wrinkles out of all those ruffles so there's the difference and this is why I always say don't use quilter it's beautiful this one's got a really cool vintage print on it i could see it made into a lot of things but until i get to the weight and the lack of drape of the fabric yeah marlene says sigh years ago i made an a-line skirt from quilter's cotton it was so stiff and had no drape but the colors were perfect yeah that's the problem <laughs> don't be seduced and it's really easy, especially if you have limited sources and limited time and you're excited. So you walk in, you go, I can sew this weekend, but I got to find my fabric today and you get seduced. So don't get seduced. Don't get rushed. Yeah. So it's like the perfect colors or you said the perfect cherry blossoms. And it's, is it really going to matter if you have the perfect colored potato sack on yeah exactly that's a good one yeah you're no. making a beautiful rag yeah 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 so yeah a lot of people saying and we've mistake. all made that mistake sometime in our sewing career chose the wrong weight of fabric maybe it wasn't too heavy maybe it was too light or maybe it was too sheer whatever it was and you had that you had that moment when you bought it when you were so excited and you could kind of vision it in your head and then you had that moment when you finished it and put it on and they oh what a disappointment and I've been there so um, Jen says could you use quilters cotton for a jacket perhaps um, Jen you can use quilters cotton for whatever you want but then again or do you want to look like the perfectly colored potato sack yeah <laughs> now there are fabric manufacturers that make quilters fabric that also make a line of canvases that make yes. great jackets yes there was one if any of you took my jacket express class on craftsy that was the garment industry secrets and it had birds on it every so often that was a moda but it wasn't a moda quilters cotton it was a Moda canvas. So those of you who are quilters know Moda has a really nice reputation of making beautiful, absolutely beautiful collections of quilters cotton. But they also do these canvases. And they are a lightweight canvas that make an excellent jacket. So just because you walked in the quilt shop doesn't mean it's all quilters cotton either. Um, it's just about educating yourself, really. And learning um, the different fabrics and uh, if you've got to buy online ask for swatches if you're not ready uh, to 
you know, you, yeah, you so I was going to ask you that in a little bit, but since you brought it up, um, I don't remember. It might have been somebody said, I when you were talking about the hand, they don't have any stores near them to yeah. be able to do that. So ask for swatches. Yeah. You should be able to do that. Mm hmm. Yeah, you should be able to. I know Fabric.com does it, and we certainly would do it for you. Um, you're not going to get a big piece. You're not going to be able to have but something enough like to this. Get in your but finger. a little, you know, a couple of inches just to um, know that you're on the right track right. and you're not spending $30, $40, $50 for fabric that's going to sit in a stash right. someplace. And like Janet said, if the website has all the proper information on it, you should have a good idea of what you will be yeah. getting. And I will tell you this somebody asked me when I was talking last week, I think, about the cocas that I like and some are cotton linen and some are linen linen cotton and so somebody said well how can it well what's the difference the difference is whenever fiber content is spoken or written it's supposed to be the highest content first just like when you read the ingredients on the back of your food label the highest ingredient is the first so if somebody says this is cotton linen, that means there's more cotton than linen, unless they say 50-50, okay? So one time, I think it was Mood, I bought some blue clay, and it said wool poly. And I bought wool back in the day. I bought hundreds and hundreds, if you remember hauling it in from the road, just hundreds and hundreds of yards at a time of wool melting. And... Um, Many times in coating, they'll add a little dylon or a little polyester. So this didn't have the percentage, so I assumed that's what it was. Well, when I got it, I could tell just by the feel of it, and it didn't even come out of the box, that it was polyester. And like I told Mood, if any wool even touched this fabric, I'd be surprised. But if it, and they had written it backwards on their website. So I was able to return it with no problem whatsoever because they were wrong. And they told me it was one thing when it wasn't. But it delayed my time. It, you know, it definitely ate up my time because I was ready to sew on it when, it when it came through the door. And now it wasn't at all what I wanted. And there you go. Um, okay, Marcy, don't feel bad about that. If you are happy and your husband is happy <laughs> by making the shirts out of it, then that's all that matters. That's what sewing's all about, right? Is having what you want she and she what makes you... She said she makes her husband's shirts out of quilters. Cut. Okay, nope. so there's plenty of people that do that because they get motifs. Like if you're... One was the guy that liked trucks and his yep. wife made the trucks. And there's uh, another gentleman I visited their home when I was teaching and he's a train fanatic. He had a whole huge room in the house yep. devoted to trains. So it was the train shirt. And that's okay. But if, Marcy, you haven't made a shirt out of lawn or Pima, mm -hmm. then make one. Just do yourself that favor and make one because you will see the difference. Yeah. But if it makes you happy and makes oh, him yeah. happy, then that is what matters. Absolutely. I'm not saying don't, don't do it because every time I give this class, I always right. tell people, if there's a certain motif... And you're going to a train convention and he needs a shirt with trains on it, then do it. We are always going to give you the advice to be the most successful that you can be. But if something else makes you happy and you find success in that, then that's just fine. Well, we won't judge you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. Now? I think we started. We did it. We did that and we're going to go on to interfacing. Any questions on that? I think we're good. We we did that. You can obviously very much see the difference there just by draping it. So think about that on your body. Mm -hmm. So interfacing. Okay. So let's talk a little bit because once you've chosen your pattern and you then we taught you how to find the ease so you can make sure you're going to be cutting the correct size. Now you know uh, what fabric you want. The next step is, is where, when, how, and what type of interfacing to put in it. 
okay? So why do we use interfacing? Most people will tell you um, to make the collar stiff, right? Um, what other reasons do you think we use interfacing? Let me get these samples. Because the pattern says to. Okay, that's another good reason. <laughs> Okay, so one of the first reasons that we use interfacing is so that we have collars that stand like this. And that collar comes out of the dryer like that. And so we have cuffs that always have some integrity to them. And they look nice on the body. But also, we want to always interface any place we put a buttonhole in. Yep, Brenda and Marlene... Buttons, they say. Right. Buttons and buttonholes. Because anytime there's stress on the garment. Yes, Jen. Button. Button and button. Uh, buttoning and unbuttoning all the time. First of all, a buttonhole can stretch out. So it will stretch out if there's no interfacing right. behind Mary it. Mary says prevents stretching. The button is sewn to the uh, facing placket underneath here. And that also, all that thread and everything, if you were just putting that through a couple of layers of shirting, it wouldn't be firm enough to hold it. And eventually, most likely, you're going to rip a hole in that fabric, right where all that stitching is. There's a lot of stitching, so having that interfacing allows you to get a lot of stitching. But when you have interfacing, see how these, pl these uh, pocket flaps just lay so beautifully against the body because they have the right amount of interfacing in them. So this, this is key to me. And I know there's people out there that say, oh, you don't need that much interfacing, or you can just put in a piece of muslin. for. You will not have a collar that looks like this ever, if that's what you do. So a firm interfacing, you know how I feel about a firm interfacing in a collar. So that is one reason we use interfacing. In a garment like our Motor City Express, we put more interfacing in this than you we put in another jacket. So we've got interlining or interfacing all along here and all along the arm side. We have it in the lapels. We have it along all the hems. And this gives us more integrity for this garment. So it, because this garment fits very close to the body. So we don't want anything to get all wonky and stretched out and not hang nice. So we have that extra interfacing to make sure those armholes stay in the shape they were meant to be in. And so this garment always looks like a dressed up garment. It's a button up, I kind of call it. I don't know. With lots of zippers. With lots of zippers. It's really zipped up. But you know what I mean when you're they say buttoned you're, you're up. buttoned up. You know, you're, you're just um, looking your best and feeling like you're standing up straight and everything hangs from your body nicely. So I was in a tailor shop or a would-be tailor shop, as it were, and <laughs> the young man is showing me around and he's fairly new to the industry and I look over and he goes oh this is one of our our best jackets and he's got this jacket on a dress form and it's plaid and a really muted plaid it was pretty um, but it was bamboo and he's telling me yeah this is bamboo and I look all across here I think it was just uh, two button or something but right across the waist area or just above the waist you could see that plaid had been stretching and it, it wasn't you know laying straight anymore just in that area well after talking to him a little longer I found out that he didn't think this guy's amazing he didn't think it needed interfacing so they had put no interfacing in this front of this coat that they were charging hundreds of dollars for hundreds of dollars for and I'm looking at it and he goes what's the matter because he could tell by my eyes and I said well you know see what's happening right here this is stretching out so we called in um, an industrial uh, company that sells interfacings for jackets and that man came in and put him straight <laughs> 
but you can see this jacket had only been worn a few times and it was already stretching the shape of that jacket out. So interfacing uh, makes a big difference. So always put it where the um, company says to put it, wherever the pattern designer says to put it, but you can go beyond that. And if you're doing a jacket, a really nice jacket, and it doesn't tell you to put interfacing around the arm side and across the shoulders, you can do it. Go take a look at this pattern. I'll show you exactly. It's just a two and a half inches or so. You use the pattern and just trace a two and a half inch, put it in there. Um, now, when you want to decide what type of interfacing do I put where, and there's a lot of different interfacings out there. So what I like to do is I'll take the fashion fabric, maybe about a four inch square, six inch square of the fabric, and adhere some interfacing to it. And maybe I'll do two or three different weights to see which one I like the best. So I've done a sample here for you in muslin of two weights of interfacing. Now this is the lightest weight I carry. And so that's muslin. So the muslin's really wimpy. Of course we don't make garments out of muslin, but that adds just the right amount of firmness to have in, in specific areas where maybe the collar would curl back nicely or something. Now here is the heavy one. Now that is um, armor weft hair canvas that you put in wool coats. See, there's no bend whatsoever to that. So this is way too heavy of a interfacing for this fabric and for what I wanna do with it. Now, if I had this in wool, the wool has got enough weight to it that we'd get a nice curl. It would, would look really nice because the wool is heavier than the muslin. So you gotta think about how heavy is my fabric and how firm do I want where I'm interfacing? Is it just to add structure or is it to make the collar stand up straight? So that's, that's what you have to do, but you're gonna have to test it because there's lots of different types of interfacing out there and I don't carry them all. We're hopefully this year be able to add a couple more, but um, I like to get them from the industry and I, I would not use anything but, in most cases, other than woven. There are some knitted, but I do not ever subscribe to the non-woven interfacings. You know what I'm talking about. You can buy them at Joann's, and you look at them, you can't see a weave. So look for the weave structure. If it just looks like press board with a bunch of fibers going every which way, you know what it is? It's pieces of leftover fiber that have been uh, mixed with glue. So it's a hot dog. Yeah. Yeah, that's how the sausages are made, as they say. So it's all uh, the leftovers mushed it's, together. Yeah, it's just mushed together and it, it isn't going to act the same. If you make a woven garment and you use a woven interfacing, it's got some of the same properties. So in other words, a woven will stretch slightly on the cross grain, uh, doesn't stretch on the, the weft, um, no, the warp, doesn't stretch on the lengthwise, okay? But it slightly stretches on the cross grain and it really stretches on the bias. Well, the same thing, you want the same property of interfacing adhered to your fabric or you're negating some of that. Diane asks, is fabric interfacing better for a dress shirt? Yes. Yes, we carry the industry uh, interfacing used in better shirts like Brooks Brothers. Yes. And we carry two weights. Now the one is really, really firm. When I say firm, it's firm. And if, especially for people who wear ties, a nice firm collar that'll hold up and not collapse when they put the, the tie on. But then we carry a medium firm and that might be to your liking as well. So it depends on uh, your taste, the wearer's taste, and the type of fabric you're using. We've talked about it before, but Janet has gone through countless, countless number 
of samples of interfacing until she found what is best and what she thinks is the best, what works the best, and that is what we carry. It doesn't mean that there isn't all other good stuff out there, but if you were getting it from us, um, from our website, know that it has been gone through the ringer, all the tests done to it, the pressing, the washing, the everything to get the one that she feels And I can tell you with certainty that reputable, well-known, well, known, well um, sought after manufacturers use this same interfacing. They don't use that press glued stuff. They don't use it at all. Um, so, uh, but you're right, it is, it is um, some of the best. And ours come 45 to 60 inches wide. So look for that type of interfacing too. Then you know it's a better, uh, coming from a better source. What they do with some of the stuff they sell at the discount stores or the box stores, whatever you want to call them, is they cut it in, they take the 60 inch wide and cut it three times. And so it's 20 inches wide when you buy it, but they charge you the same price per yard that they should be charging you at 60 wide. So you're overpaying for it on you're top You're overpaying of it. for an inferior product. Yeah, um, it's true and it's sad. So Sandy wants to know, she is a girl who wants a dress that's knit but buttons down. What type of interfacing would you use for that? Well, first of all, you, got, you want to use a stable knit. So something like a ponte, and ponte comes in several weights. And then you want to use a trico knit interfacing because it'll still give a little bit but it will help stabilize those buttonholes and buttons okay so then we want to talk about choosing the proper fabric for yourself you would have you have to have the person with you if you're going to do it. but I grew up with this technique and we always use this technique when we went to the fabric store in order to purchase a uh, fabric that we knew would complement our skin tone, your eye color, whatever, your hair color. So we're gonna drape some fabrics on Jessica just to show you how we do it. And um, this is how we do it. So the most important thing is, is to drape this up close to your face and not like have you're any- you're putting a smock on. Yeah, and no other fabric is showing. Then you look closely at the person's face. Now, before you put it on, you want to look too and see if there are changes. Now, I don't know if we're going to have dramatic changes on a camera like this, but generally what you're going to see is either the color drain from your face or the color lift up and like maybe a little bit of a glow to the face. You'll be able to tell. We were looking for something yellow because if we put something yellow on Jessica, you would see it right now. The color drains right out of her face. <laughs> Probably just doing this. Yeah, uh, not quite. But anyway, so that's what you want to do. Let's try the hot pink. Now, this is one of our new fabrics that's in the newsletter yes. this week. It's a rayon jersey, lightweight again. So this will make great summer tees. And it's really reasonably priced. So if you um, haven't made the five easy tees yet, this is perfect. And you can whip them up at a really reasonable price. And um, a few people said they didn't get the newsletter. So um, I will look into that. But we are going to show you the fabrics. They're on the website and we're going to show you. So don't worry if you didn't get that we yet. Put, we'll put a link to the newsletter on Facebook later. Yeah, of course. Okay. So try this hot pink. All right, so these, all these that we're showing you are the new colors that we got it. So, people. All right, so this I think is really good on Jessica. That's a good color. And here's the other thing is if your hair color changes, it does change what colors you can wear. And I almost didn't wear the sweater today. Yeah, because it's kind of... It's older. I had different colored hair. When I put it on, mm -hmm. I felt a little blah, but I went with it anyway. Yeah, but this is very true. And I remember a friend of mine went to one of these things where they tell you what your colors are. And she asked me to go with her, so I went. and But I didn't participate. 
But the first thing they did was cover her head. They put like a mm. plastic bag, a plastic like bonnet a on a half or something. And I said to myself, well, no, I'm right now not sold because when I had dark hair, naturally dark brown hair, I could not wear black or gray. It just washed me right out. The minute I started highlighting my hair, I could wear black and gray and I could wear it really well, but I couldn't wear it then. So the hair color definitely makes a difference um, in the colors. Do you want to try another color? Yeah. All right. Let's try a blue maybe. Yeah, a limp. This is so blue, it's almost purple. <laughs> and we just called it bright blue, but it is a gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <sighs> Look like you're in that yep. Mm hmm You don't like this one? I, I mean, it's fine, but something happened with the something, the lighting. Or... Yeah, but again, you know, this is something. I would wear this color, yes. Yeah. The yeah. pink was better. Okay, yeah, and you'll appreciate this when you do it in good lighting at home more than you're going to appreciate what we're showing you because the camera lighting is so odd. Um, mm -hmm. One minute we're washed out and the next minute... Well, you said when you moved the dress form, yeah. it happened. So that's the blue. What are we calling that blue? Bright blue. Bright blue. Yeah. And then um, we've got a coral. Now these are all the new fabrics. They're $9.98, but they're still um, a, uh, a rayon, a rayon jersey. And um, yep, they said the pink was better than the blue. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to do all these, but I'm just no. showing you. If you got, you should the, just show them the colors though. If you got the coral hearts, this is very similar. Mm hmm This color to the coral hearts. Yep. Uh, would the rayon knit wrinkle when traveling? No, not really. And again, it um, it's the kind you can pretty much roll up. But if there's any kind of wrinkles, I mean, if it's balled up for quite a while, yeah. Then you hang it in the shower. Who was it that got the tip about put it in the sh in the bathroom in the yeah. hotel and turn a hot shower on? I was the queen of doing that. My friends, when we would travel, would bring me their clothes and put them all in the bathroom. Yes. So Marlene has a good point um, about shopping in stores, which I know some people can do, but sometimes it's hard because of the fluorescent lighting. It's terrible. If they actually. have windows, <laughs> just pick up that bolt of fabric and make your way to a window. <laughs> and you could. Yeah. Have, I've asked to go outside before, not with fabric, but in the department store because I bought a trench coat once at Macy's, and I got home and I said, "Oh, I have this." really cool lavender trench coat. I was so excited. I took it out of the bag and it was gray. It was not, wasn't even close to lavender, but the uh, fluorescent lighting had uh, deceived me at the store. Um, I'm going to get another color and can they, uh, Lynette wants to know the, oh no, uh, Evelyn wants to know the weight. What's the weight of these? They're, uh, I believe it's 4.2. 4.2. Is Brenda in here? 4.2 ounces on the uh, New York Knits. Sure. She's going to double check it. It is written in the description on the website. Now, was this in the newsletter? No. Okay, that's so not part of that group. Oh. Just the other two, and then those two oh. are separate. That's right. You told me that. Yeah. So, we've got two more colors to show you real quick. And um, the teal. <laughs> Four point two on the weight. Yes. And what was our bamboo? Uh, that's I think that's a six. Maybe. You guys can see. Five point six. The bamboo was five point six. So this is lighter weight than the bamboo. You'd see the great, great drape on this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it just feels so nice. That's the hand, and that's the drape. Very good, Jesse. <laughs> So this, um, uh, definitely look at the newsletter and look at the picture on the website. It, I, it does seem on my computer at least to be coming across more blue yeah. than the teal. It's slightly on, it's on the green side yes. of teal. So know that. It's so hard with everybody's monitor being. It's a jewel tone. Yep. Jewel tone. 
These are all going to be great if you want to get ready for um, a trip uh, to a warmer climate or just get your spring and summer sewing started now. Or just feel like you're in a warmer climate. Yeah, that too. <laughs> okay, and then this is our fuchsia. Yeah, that's good on you, Jess. Mm -hmm. Too close to the light. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, love this color. So there's six of these colors. And the reason the price is so reasonable, it's a salesman that I've been working with for many, many years. And he had, uh, he just had a moment and said, hey, I'm going to give you an extra good deal. <laughs> And I said, okay, I'll take six so, colors. <laughs> so, you know, so, Janet, she couldn't turn it down. Um, but she is passing those savings on to you. These are listed at only $9.98 a yard. So, yeah. that's pretty much unheard of. She bought what was there. Um, so, we may or may, may not, not be able to. I would not count repeat. on being able to get more if we run out, but it doesn't mean that we can't. But do not count on that. Um, sorry, I'm very close reading the comments. Um, remember that the fabric on our website is sold by the half yard. That's just the way the website is set up. So one unit is half a yard. Um, two units is a yard. So t-shirt, you'll need three units, a yard and a half. Three units, a yard and a half for a t-shirt in most cases. And then what do we have in these two? Now, the, the, she, Jessica's going to show show you two more knits that I bought in uh, New York. And these are uh, from a company that's reorderable. So, th but these I just fell in love with. So I didn't buy any more black bamboo I was going to. And then I came yeah, across this stuff. And yeah, that's really washing you out because of our lighting. Look at me. Um, oh, I look great. Okay. So this is a very rich black, even though it looks gray in it's our lighting. It's the black. Black is black. But True what's black. really cool about this is it's a French terry, and it's modal. So it's a rayon French terry. The drape on this is to die for. You could make it um, a little bit heavier, so you could actually do a summer weight pant out of this, um, but it'll make a great easy V. So if you haven't made a black easy V yet, that's what I'm getting ready to make this and the next fabric we're showing you uh, for a trip I'm taking soon. Um, but this stuff is, oh, is just fabulous. So it's French terry and it is rayon made from, uh, it's a micro mo uh, modal. So that makes it even softer and finer feeling. Okay, I have a couple questions. The width on this. 60. 60. Would this weight be good for our, or the other one, I think is what Terry is asking. Would the weight be good for a tunic? Yes. Yes, Terry. Th this one. This one. What yes. about the other one? The so, first ones. The first ones, no. Remember, we yes. talked about they're too light. The 4.2 ounce, it's going to, it's going to keep clinging to you and it's going to like want to go between your legs um, when you walk. The interfacings are by the yard though. Yes. Interfacings, Marlene, are by the yard and anybody else. Those are by the yard. All the fabric, half yard. Yeah, interfacing, we didn't want to mess with that because it's a staple. You buy it by the yard, two yards, three yards. Would you do whatever. pants with the black fabric? Yes, you could do a summer weight drapey pant. Absolutely. Now, if you want not a drapey pant, we have the black ponte and the Princeton gray ponte. Now, those make a more substantial like yoga type pant. So this one that I'm bringing out is the same as the black? No. No, no, it's lighter. It's uh, it's not a French terry. This is a rayon jersey, and that's the wrong side. Here's what's really cool. And you, what you can't appreciate um, in the pictures I took. Which is why it's not in the newsletter. And you almost can't appreciate it on the camera either because it's a nicer heather than most. It's not just little stripes. There's little dots. Of black and white in there so it's just rich looking um, and it's got that gorgeous uh, weight so you could do again a five easy tees out of this this is about the same weight as the black so you could do a yeah, summer a weight uh, pant out of it as well I just um, love love like you said the heathered of it it's different than you normally see um, 
I love gray. I tried to stop buying so much black and I didn't realize till I was going through my closet I apparently just replaced it with gray. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is really beautiful. It feels nice. Drapes nice. Better than nice. Yeah. It's just, I mean. And we did get. Luscious. You know, we got three new fabrics last week uh, in the lawn that we didn't show yet. Do you want to show those? Of course you do. Well, we have to now. You said it out loud. Hey. So, um, Go for it. this. These are all from the same place we've been buying our lawns for the tropical shirts. So these don't need to be pre-washed. And they've been selling so well in the kits and by the yard that we replaced um, and got three new ones that we haven't had before. I wish I'd have seen these before. They're beautiful. All right. So what's that one called? Do you remember? Uh, turquoise Blues. Turquoise Blues. This is something else. I don't remember that name. This one's very fun. It's a colorway we have not really had before. Let's offer something new. Yeah, and it's very intricate. At first, you just see the motifs, but there's also a woven pattern going through the fabric in both directions that you don't see till you get up close. And sometimes it, it's those subtle touches that you don't see till you're close is what makes it a richer, more expensive look. And this one, I can tell you, is called Purple Passion. Brenda the Spenda is on a roll. <laughs> All right. And I know I got a lot of um, comments or questions coming in about, again, the weights and the widths and stuff. All that is listed. If you didn't hear us say already or if we missed it, all of that is listed on the fabric on the website, islandersewing.com. Go for it. Uh, well, this is another lawn, the third one, and this is called Purple Passion. So, um, kind of have something for everybody. Uh, we're going to continue with the Islander kits for a while. Um, I am going to be uh, teaching the Islander shirt in person at the American Sewing Guild Convention in July. That's 9th through the 12th. And I think I'm teaching on, well, I'm teaching that Thursday, whatever that Thursday is, if that's the... Yeah, we'll kind of have all the summary of our classes and stuff in the next couple episodes, and we'll let you know um, And we're going to make those kits is. available to the people that take that class. Yeah. Um, okay, I think, unless you bought some more fabric you need to show them that I don't know about. We're carrying muslin now. <laughs> And we have two weights of rock lawn muslin, which oh. is a nicer muslin. But for those of you who took our pant drafting class, we've got the heavier weight muslin that you don't always see. And that's perfect for your pant muslin. And then we have the lighter weight. So those are also available. Um, but that's it. Sharon. No, these fabrics are for whoever. Whoever wants them. What? She's asking, are they more manly? Oh, no. I do not think so at all. Mm -mm. Um, this one even, I mean. That one's really lavender. Got the lavender. Not, I mean, my husband would wear that, but. Um, definitely, definitely, anybody who wants to wear them can wear them. And uh, we usually try to pick out some that are a little bit more toward the, as you said, manly side and more towards the feminine and then some in the middle. Mm -hmm. And But most fall in the middle. Most yeah. just fall in the middle. They're pretty uh, uh, neutral gender. Yeah. Uh, they're asking about the modal. What the about? The fiber. It? The fiber. Modal, well, they don't know what modal is. It's RAM. It's another cellulose uh, fiber from a plant. So it's natural. Uh, Liz, we did talk about the fabric of Janet's jacket earlier in the um, video. No, she doesn't carry that right now. Not yet. <laughs> that credit card's on fire. On Brenda, fire. help me out. 
<laughs> Brenda will just help me spend more. No, I'm talking Brenda the spender. Oh, you want her to buy it all? <laughs> she is. She's doing it. She's okay. good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so also, so all the fabric we just showed you is on the web website, islandersewing.com. Uh, sold by the half yard. Don't forget we still have the uh, a couple of the kits left for the Easy Cape. Yes, there if are you Easy Cape that, kits. That and they are on sale. Dwindling. And a couple yardage. Yes, you can now buy the Bordeaux, the French Bordeaux Polar Tech and the Antique Gold Polar Tech by the yard. And then they're both available in kits along with the Black Curly. And we have one red kit left, that long napped uh, Polar Tech with the wind block in it. There's only one of those left in existence. And that's it. And that's it. And we're, we're, we're moving on. Um, but thank you, thank you so much for all the Cape photos. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go and see what everybody's Cape turned out like, please go it's just really fun to see the different variations all even just the different variations of the fabric purchased from us and there's lots you know of different too. um trims for the hoods different closures um and then you have the ones of the fabric that was not purchased from us which we fully support um we had the um arkansas. the collegiate uh arkansas pol red. polar fleece um, there was an, a pretty blue, um, lots of stuff on there. So go take a look at that. And I'm going to pull a winner. Um, so this again is um, everybody who posted a picture of their finished Easy Cape is in here. And I'm gonna make sure I get only one. And the winner is Ethel Horton. Ethel Horton, you will receive a $50 um, store credit to purchase any of the products on our website, Islander or Fashion Patterns by Connie. Um, and we will connect with you on that. Brenda will reach out to you um, and get you what you need to know for that. So Ethel, Thank you very much for participating and showing off your creation. We will be back. Oh, we will be back next week. Um, we're continuing the Sewing a Proper Fit uh, series and you have asked and asked and asked and we are very excited to be moving forward um, with dress forms and learning about dress forms. So we should get into that next week. Yes. And we That's hope to amazing. have some special savings for you on that as well. So we will be back next week, Tuesday at, at two. two. And we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for all the feedback and questions. If I know there were some questions we didn't get to, um, if you really need an answer to that, please Islander Sewing at Comcast.net and um you'll get the fastest response through email and uh well if not if you can wait till next week bring it again next week and hopefully we can answer it for you thank you very much see you in a week thanks for joining us here at islander sewing systems where we teach you how to sew faster and better and now we're going to teach you how to get a better fit see you next week <laughs>